All right, hi everybody. Welcome to our project on Irish bogger classification using Gaussian naive Bayes. So uh, to start, we just want to give some intuition behind Bayes classification. And so the basic way that it works is that we're using the implicit assumption that features exist on a Gaussian normal distribution and that you can predict different output labels that contain distinguishing characteristics using those distributions. And so we form these probabilistic models on the features and obviously you can see from these graphs that these are the different types of flowers and uh, some of these flowers have really distinct features like this irisitosa and so that lets the model uh, distinguish between those and uh, that's basically how it works at a high level. And so the algorithm itself, like kind of what Jack mentioned, is we are trying to uh, classify uh, a given feature vector as one of these three output labels for the different kinds of irises using a Gaussian naive Bayes approximation. And then, uh, so basically the steps of this algorithm, the first one is we accumulate the means and standard deviations of each of the features for each of the given labels. This is kind of happens during the training portion of our model. And then the second step that happens after that is we basically find the conditional probabilities for a feature given the output label. So we do this for all the possible features, and then we use these conditional probabilities, multiply them together as a product, which is the third step. And then we basically select which label had the highest uh, probability product and that is our three-label prediction. So to implement this in hardware, we break up the uh, training and prediction uh, parts into two different loops that are separate pieces of hardware. Uh, so to start with the training data, you need to train the model before you can use it to predict anything. So we send this training flag uh, into the FPGA from the arm, uh, which indicates that we want the model to be trained uh, all of the training data, all the training features and labels are stored in onboard VRAM. So that, those can be loaded uh, from VRAM and then used to accumulate the priors, means, and standard deviations. Uh, once that's done, the FPGA will send a training finish flag back to the arm, at which point we know the model's trained and uh, it's ready to receive features to predict. Uh, so after that, we can stream in all of our test features into the predict loop. Uh, it will predict what flower it thinks it is based on the features and send out its prediction. Uh, some of the optimizations we tried was pipelining the prediction loop. Um, so as you can see there, the in order to pipeline the prediction loop, we need to unroll the um, feature loop, which involves uh, partitioning all the uh, mean, standard deviation, and prior arrays. And after that, we pipeline the design under test loop as well. So instead of um, sending in all the test data in the host code or the iris test bench, we do that in the design under test so that we can achieve the minimum II of four. And then uh, a lot of our other approximations were born out of the fact that when we were pipelining these larger loops, we were running into uh, utilization issues with our DSP blocks from the exponent operator, which happens in the Gaussian probability calculation inside of the feature loop. And uh, we said that if we wanted to get more parallelism, we could try to optimize this out. So the first way we did that was Taylor series approximation. We did it with four terms. And we found out that uh, we were actually using more resources for the Taylor series approximation than if we were just using exponent by itself due to all the floating point operations. So we eventually discarded this optimization. But we eventually stuck with one that used a triangle approximation, approximation of the Gaussian distribution using this piecewise linear curve here. And then instead of having to calculate with the exponent operator, we can just find uh, our position on the triangular function to uh, estimate the uh, probability instead. We found that this did not give us as much of an accuracy penalty, so we stuck with it to give us a much greater speed up uh, eventually. Uh, so the results uh, of this design, we were able to achieve 153 times speed up uh, over the ARM processor and over an 18 times speed up uh, over the ECE Linux server. Uh, and this was mainly due to the realization that floating point operations are very expensive uh, Stefan mentioned uh, the floating point operations with exponents uh, took up a lot of latency and components. Yeah, and so um, obviously like our solution to this problem is to use approximation um, to basically reduce the area utilization but also the execution time. And so uh, while it's not super clear how these two might be linked, obviously we needed to get the utilization down because we're uh, far over the usage in DSP and LUTs. And so the triangle approximation enabled us to have a design that fit on the board. But the triangle approximation also got us a three times speed up over the version that was actually using the Gaussian. And so um, when you think about that, the reason that we're able to do that is because of the lower utilization. We're able to pipeline more of the design and, and basically get one prediction every four cycles, which is as fast as we possibly could, given that we can stream in 32 bits at a time.
And um, obviously this comes with an accuracy trade-off as well, like Steph mentioned. So we lost about 1.67% accuracy with these approximations, but we thought that that was a good trade-off for us. And for our demo, we ran um, the design on the Eastern Linux server, um, first to test out the functionality and also get the report, and uh, that's how we analyzed our designs. Um, and afterwards, we generated the bitstream, and we could run it on the software version on the ARM core on the Z board. Um, and finally, we ran it on the FPGA to get the final timings for our evaluation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.